Hi, I'm back. Uh, I'll be reading some more from the Bible, and I will, will be, and I am, uh, and I am using, and I am using the reading plan from the Daily Audio Bible, uh, Bible, and I'm now in the chronological section, chronological, and I'll be reading for January eighteenth, twenty twenty-one, and so I'll be reading Genesis. Chapters nineteen to to Genesis chapter twenty one. Genesis chapter nineteen. Genesis chapter 19. Sarah, there, prob there probably isn't anything harder to do than wait. Whether we are, we are expecting something, something, something good, something bad, or an unknown. One way we often cope with a long wait or even a short one is to, is to, is to begin. Helping God, God get his plan into action. Sarah tried this approach. She was too old to expect to have a child uh, of her own. So she thought so she thought God must have must have something else in mind. From Sarah's limited point of view, this this could only this could uh, this could only this could, this could on, only be to, 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 to give Abraham a son through another woman, a common practice in her day. The plan seemed harmless enough. Abraham was asleep with Sarah's servant, who would then, then, give birth to a child. Sarah would, would take the child as her own. The plan worked beautifully at first, but as you, but as you, 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 you read about, about, the the events that followed you you will be you will be struck by how often Sarah must must have regretted the day she did she she decided she decided to push to push God's timetable ahead. Another way we cope with a long wait is to gradually conclude con conclude that what we are we are gradually conclude. That what we are, we we are we waiting for is never going to happen. So we waited ninety ninety years for a baby, baby. When God told her she would she would finally have one of her own, she she laughed. Not not so, not so much from a lack of faith in what God could could do, but from doubt. But from doubt about. About what he, but about what he he could do to to her. When confronted about her laughter, she lied, and she had and she had seen seen her husband do from time to time. She probably didn't want her want her true feelings to be known to be known. What parts of your life seem? To be on hold right now. Do you understand that this may be may be part of God's plan for you? The Bible has more than than enough clear direction to keep us busy. To keep us busy, while we are while we are waiting for some particular part of life to move ahead. To move ahead, strengths and accomplishments. Was intensely loyal to her own child, became the mother of a nation and an ancestor of Jesus. Was a woman of faith, the the first woman listed in the in the hall of faith in he in Hebrews chapter eleven. Weaknesses and mistakes. Had trouble believing God's promises to her. Attempted attempted. To to walk to 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 walk to walk problems out on her own without consulting God tried to cover her faults 
by blaming others. Lessons from Hard Life. God responds to faith even in the midst of failure. God is God is not bound by what by what usually happens. He can he can stretch the limits and cause and cause and causes unheard of events to occur. Vital statistics where married where married where married a B R A M and you are the Chaldeans that moved with them to Canaan occupation wife mother household manager relatives father T E R A H husband Abraham half brothers N A H O R and H A R A N nephew Lot son Isaac he was by faith even even by faith even so so who was past, who was past childbearing age was unable to 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 bear to bear children because she because she because she considered him considered him faithful who who had made the promise Hebrews chapter eleven verse eleven. Sarah's story is told in Genesis chapter eleven to twenty five. She is also mentioned in Isaiah chapter fifty one verse two, Romans chapter four verse nineteen verse nineteen, Romans chapter four verse nineteen, Romans chapter nine verse nine, Hebrews chapter eleven verse eleven, one Peter chapter three verse six. Sodom and G O M O R R A H destroyed. Genesis chapter nineteen. The two angels arrived at Sodom in the evening, and Lot was sitting in the gateway of the city. When he saw them, he got up to meet them and bowed, and bowed down with his face to the ground. My lords, he said, "Please turn aside to your servant's house. You can wash your feet and spend the night, and then." Go on your way early in the morning. No, they answered. We will spend the night in the square. But he insisted so strongly that they did that they did go with them and entered his house. He prepared a meal for them, baking bread without ease, and they ate. Before they had had gone to bed, all the men from every part of the city of Sodom, both young and old, surrounded the house. They called to Lot, "Where are the men who came to you tonight? Bring them out to us, so that we we can have sex with them." Lot went outside to meet them and shut the door behind him, and said, "No, my friends, don't do the this wicked thing. Look, I have I have two daughters who have never slept with a man. Let me bring them out to you, and you and you can do do." What what you like with them, but don't do, but don't do anything to these men, for they have come under the protection of, of my will. Get out of our way! They replied. This fellow came here as a foreigner, and now he wants to play the judge. We will treat you worse than them. They kept, they kept, bringing pressure on Lord and move forward. I move forward two to two to break down the door, but the men inside reached out and put and put lot lot and put lot and put lot back into back into the house and 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 shut the door. Then they struck the men who were at the door of the house, young and old, with blindness, so that they could they could not find the door. Find the door. The two men said to Lot, "Do you have anyone else here, sons-in-law, sons or daughters, or anyone or anyone else in the city who belongs to you? Get them out of here, because we are because we are going to destroy this place." The outcry to the Lord against His people is is so great that He has sent us to destroy it, to destroy it. So Lot went out and spoke. To his sons-in-law, who were pledged to marry his daughters, he said, "Hurry and get out of this place, because, because, 
the Lord is about to destroy the city. But his sons-in-law thought he was joking. <laughs> thought he was joking. With the coming of dawn, the angels heard Lot saying, "Holy, take your wife and your two daughters who are here, or you will be swept away when the city is punished." When he hesitated, the man grasped his hand and the hands of his wife. And of his and of his two daughters and 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 let them safely out of the city, for the Lord was merciful to them. As soon as they ha- as they had brought them out, one of them said, "Flee for your lives! Don't look, don't look back, and don't stop anywhere in the plain. Flee to the mountains, or you or you will be swept." Away, but Lot said to them, "No, my lords, please. Your servant ha- has found favor in your eyes, and you have and you have shown great kindness to me in sparing my life. But I can't flee to the to the mountains. This disaster will 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 overtake me, and I will die. Look, here is a town near enough to run to, and it is and it is small. Let me flee to it." It is. It is very. It is very small, isn't it? Then my life will be spared. He said to him, "Very well. I will grant this request too. I will. I will not overthrow the town. You. You speak up, but but flee there quickly because I, because I, because I cannot do cannot do anything until you reach it." That is why the town was called Zoar. By the time Lot with Zoar the son had risen over the land, then the Lord rained rained down burning sulfur on Sodom and G O M O R A H from from the Lord out of the heavens. Thus he, thus he overthrew those cities and the entire plain destroyed, and, and the entire plain. Destroying, destroying all all those living in the cities, and also the vegetation and the land. A large wife looked back, and she became a pillar of salt. Early the next morning, Abraham got up and returned to the place where he where he had stood before the Lord. He looked down toward Sodom and G O M O R R A H, toward all the land of the other plain. And he saw a dense smoke rising from the land, like smoke from a furnace. So when God destroyed the cities of the plain, he remembered Abraham, and he, and he brought Lot out of the castle of Phobi, that that overthrew the cities where Lot had lived. Had lived, Lot and his daughters. Lot and his and his. Two daughters left Z O A R and settled in the mount in the mountains, for he was afraid to to stay in Z O A R. He and his his two daughters lived in a cave. One day, the older the older daughter said to the younger, "Our father is old, and there is no man around here to give us children, as is the custom all over the earth. Let's get." Our father to drink wine, to drink wine, and then and then sleep with him and preserve our family line through our father. That night they got their father to drink wine, and the older daughter went in and slept with him. He was not aware of it when she lay down or when she got up. The next day, the older the older daughter said to the younger, "Last night I slept with my with my father." With my father, Let, let's get him to drink to drink wine again tonight, and you go in and sleep with him. So we can, so we can, so we can, so we can, so we can push off our our family line through our father. So they got their father to drink wine that night also, and the younger daughter went in and slept with him again. He was. Not not aware of it when she lay down or when she or when she got up. So both the Lord's daughters became pregnant by their by their father. The older daughter had a son 
and she named him M-O-A-B. He is the father of the M-O-A-B-I-T-E-S of today. The younger daughter also had a son, and she named him B-E-N-A-M-M-I. -E 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 he is the father of the Amorites of today. Of today. Abraham and A-B-I-M-E-L-E-K. Now Abraham moved on from there into the region of the N-E-G-E-V and lived between K-A-D-E-S-H and S-H-U-R. For a while he stayed in G for a while he stayed in G-E-R-A-R. -E -R. And and there and there Abraham said of his uh, and there Abraham said, Of his wife Sarah, she is my sister. Then A B I M E L E K, king of G E R A R, sent for Sarah and took her. But God came to A B I M E L E K in a dream one night and said to him, You are as good as dead because of the woman you are taken. She is a married woman. Now A B I M E L E K had not gone had not gone near her, so he said so he said, Lord, will you destroy an innocent nation? Did he not say to me she is my sister? And didn't she also say he is my my brother? I had done this with a with a clear conscience and clean hands. Then God said to said said to him in the dream, yes, I know you did this with a clear conscience, and so I and so I have kept you from sinning again against me. That is why I did not I did not let let you touch her. Now return the man's wife, for he is a prophet, and he will pray for you, and you will and you will leave and you will live. But if you do. Do not, do not return all, return all. You may be sure that you, that you, and that you and all who and all who belong to you, will die early the next morning. A B I M E L E K summon all his officials, and when he and when he told them, told them all that had happened, all, all that had happened, they were very much afraid. Then A B I M E L E K called Abraham in and said, "What have you done to to us? How have I I, I wronged you that you have that you have brought such great such great guilt upon me and my kingdom? You have you have done things to me that sh that should never be done." And A B I M E L E K as Abraham as Abraham. What was your reason for doing this? Abraham replied, I said to myself, there was only no fear of God in this place and and they what they will kill me because um because of my wife. But besides besides, she really is my sister, the daughter of my of my father, though not of my mother, and she became my wife. And when God had me had me walk had me wander from from my from my father's household. I said to her, "This is how you can you can show your love to me. Everywhere we go, say to me, he is my brother." Then A B I M E L E K brought sheep and cattle and a male and a female slaves and gave them to Abraham, and he returned Sarah his wife to him. And A B I M E L E K said, "My land is 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 before is before you. Live wherever you like." To Sarah he said, "I am giving your brother a thousand shekels of silver. This is to cover the offense again. This is to cover the offense again against you before all." Who are with you? You are completely vindicated. Then Abraham prayed to God, and God healed A B I M E L E K his wife and his female slaves, so they could have children again. For the Lord had kept 
or the woman in A B I M E E L E K but this is household for conceiving because of Abraham's wife Sarah. Sarah. Isaac. A na a name carries great authority. Her、uh, name carries great authority. It's a jewel part. It triggers memories. The sound a bit of it calls you to attention anywhere. Many Bible names a comp. Many Bible Bible names accomplish accomplish even more. They were all they were often descriptions of important facts about about. Once past and hopes for the future, the choice of the name Isaac. He laughed for Abraham and so his son must have, must have created a variety of feelings in them. Each time it was it was spoken at times, it must ha- have recalled their shock laughter, their shock laughter at God's announcement that they would would be parents in their old age. At other times, it must have brought have brought back the the joyful feelings of receiving the long-awaited answer to prayer for a child. Most importantly, it was a testimony to God's power in making His promise His promise a reality. In a family of forceful initiators, Isaac Isaac was the quiet mind mind my my. Own own business type unless unless he what he was especially called and unless he was he was especially called on to take action he was the protect he was he was the protected only child child from from the time from the time so a god with a vision more until Abraham arranged his marriage to Rebecca and his own family Isaac. Had the Isaac had the P A T R I A R C H A R position, but Rebecca had the power rather than stand his ground. Isaac found it easier to compromise or lie to avoid confrontations. In spite of these shortcomings, Isaac was part of God's plan. The model his father gave the model his father his father gave him. Gay the model, his father gave him included a great gift of faith in, in the one true God. God's promise to create a a a great nation through which through which he he would bless the world. Well, was he would bless the world was passed on by Isaac to his to his twin sons. To his twin sons. It is. It is usual. It is. It is usually not hard to identify with Isaac and his weaknesses. But consider for a for a moment that God walks through walks through people in spite of their shortcomings and often through them. As you pray, as you pray, put into words your desire to be available to God. You will. You will discover that is. That is. That is. Willingness to use you is even is even great greater than your desire to be used. To be used, strengths and accomplishments. He was a miracle child born to Sarah and Abraham when when was when Sarah was ninety years old and Abraham was one hundred. He was the first descendant in fulfillment. Of God's promise to Abraham, he seems to have to have been a caring and considerate husband, at least until until his sons were born. He demonstrated great patience, weaknesses, and mistakes. Under pressure, he tended to lie. In conflict, he he sought to avoid confrontation. He played favorites between his sons and and alienated his wife. Lessons from his life: patience often brings rewards. Both, 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 both God's plans and his, and His promises are larger than people. God keeps His His promise His promises. 
God keeps his promises. He remains faithful. He remains faithful. Though we, though we, are, are often faithless. Playing, playing favorite, playing favorites is sure to, to bring family conflict. Fighter statistics where the area called the NGEV in the southern part of Palestine between K-A-D-E-S-H and S-H-U-R, Genesis chapter 20, verse 1. Occupation, wealthy livestock owner, relatives, parents, Abraham and Sarah, half-brother Ishmael, wife Rebecca, sons, Jacob and Ezra. Key verse, then God said, yes, but you, but your wife Sarah will bear you a son, and, 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 and. You, you will call him Isaac. I will establish my covenant with, with him as an, as an everlasting covenant for his descendants after him. Genesis chapter 17, verse 19. Verse 19. Isaac's story is told in Genesis chapter 17, verse, fifth, verse 15 to Genesis chapter 35, verse 29. He is also mentioned in Romans chapter 9, verses 7 to 8, Hebrews chapter 11, verses 17 to 20, James chapter 2, verses 21 to 24. Birth and near sacrifice of Isaac, the birth of Isaac, Genesis chapter 21. Now the Lord was gracious to Sarah, as he has said, and the Lord did for Sarah what he had promised. Sarah became pregnant and bore a son to Abraham in his old age. At the very time God had promised him had promised him. Abraham gave gave the name Isaac to the to the son Sarah bore him. When his son Isaac was eight days old, Abraham circumcised him as, as God commanded him. Abraham was a was a hundred years old when his son Isaac was born to him, Sarah said, God has, God has brought me laughter, and everyone who hears, who hears about this will, will, will laugh with me. And, and, she, and she added, who would have, who would have said to Abraham that Sarah would, would nurse children, yet I have borne him a son in his old age. In his old age. Hagar and Ishmael sent away. The child grew and was weaned. And on the day Isaac was weaned, Abraham held a, held a great feast. But Sarah saw that, that the son whom Hagar, the Egyptian, had born to Abraham, was mocking. And she said to Abraham, Get rid of the slave woman and her son, for that, for that woman's son will never share in the inheritance with my son Isaac. The matter distressed Abraham greatly because it concerned his son. But God said to him, Do not be, do not be so distressed about the boy and your slave woman. Listen to, listen to whatever Sarah, Sarah tells you because it is through Isaac that, that your offspring will be reckoned, will, will be reckoned. I will make the son of the slave into into a nation also, because he is your offspring. Only the next morning, Abraham took some food and a skin of water and gave them to Hagar. He set them on her shoulders and then sent her off with the boy. She went on her, her way and wandered in the desert of B-E-E-R-S-H-E-B-A. When the water and the skin was gone, she put the boy under one of the bushes. Then she went up and sat down about a bow shot away for, for she thought, I cannot watch the boy die. And, uh, and as she sat there, she began to sob. God heard the boy crying, and the angel of God called to, called to Hagar from heaven and said to her, What is the matter, Hagar? Do not be afraid. God has heard the boy crying as he, lie, as he lies there. Lift the boy up and take him by the hand, for I, for I will make him into a great nation. Then God opened her eyes, and she saw, and she saw 
a well of water, so she went and filled the and filled the skin with water and gave the boy a drink. God was with the boy as he grew up. He lived in the desert and became an archer. While he was living in the desert of P A R A N, his mother got a wife for him from Egypt. From Egypt, the treaty at B E E R S H E B A at that time A B I M E L E K and P H I C O L the commander of his forces said to Abraham, "God is with you in everything you do. Now swear." To me here before God that you will, that you will, no, no, not deal falsely with me, or my children, or or my descendants. So to me and the country, will you, will you? Now beside as a foreigner, the same kindness I have shown to you. Abraham said, I swear it. Then Abraham complained to A B I M E L E K about a well of water. That A B I M E L E K Potiphar's servants had seized, but but A B I M E L E K said, "I don't know who who has done who who has done this. You did not. You did not tell me. And and I heard about it only today. So Abraham bought sheep and cattle and gave them to A B I M E L E K, and the two men made a treaty. Abraham." Set apart seven ewe lambs from the flock, from the flock, and A B I M E L E K asked Abraham, "What is the meaning of these seven ewe lambs you you have set apart by by themselves? <laughs> by set apart by themselves?" He replied, "Accept these seven lambs from my hand as a witness that I dug this well, so the place." Was called B E E R S H E B A because the two men swore an oath there, an oath there. After the treaty had been made at B E E R S H E B A, A B I M E L E K and P H I C O L, the commander of his forces, returned to the land of the Philistines. Abraham planted a T A M A R I S K tree in N. B e e r s h e b a and and there and there he called on the name of the of the Lord the eternal God and Abraham stayed in the land of the Philistines for a long time for a long time. Okay, that's all. Bye.